And I said, no, I think I think there's I think I could do it. I think I could paint blockbusters on the street. I could paint my name very large on on the street. I think I can get away with it. I'm, I'm positive I can get away with it. So a twenty dollar bet was made, and I went out. Oh, uh, uh, ten days later, and I painted the first of seventy five gates, um, roll down gates, in the city of New York. Um, the first one was right across the street at 12th and Broadway on the old Forbidden Planet. Ran around this graffiti block 17 times. I'm done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on my beret and my smock and I'm gonna make me some art. <laughs> and that's that's really all it was. Was I was done six months later. Then the cops came for me. They cleaned out my entire apartment. They swept it. They mopped. No, they took. <laughs> They took five trash bags of nothing. They were looking for evidence of graffiti, graffiti materials, and in the end, they just took whatever wasn't nailed down, um, whatever they thought would interest them back at the precinct. And then, at the end of it, the case, the actual piece of graffiti that I pled guilty to, that I acknowledged that I had painted, it still exists. I fought the law and it was a draw. Yeah. <laughs> Came out. And I moved on. And I grew up. You know, that's like, uh, that's the takeaway was, you know, I was 32 years old. It was a good time to grow up. I mean, for whatever reason, the culture of graffiti ran its course, you know. And it's kind of amazing that something so big and so powerful, and I've got a lot of interest in my own theories about why it happened, but... It ran out of gas. It's crazy to see graffiti just like, in some ways. Like, Why do you say it ran out of gas? Well, in just the way that it was like you were saying, where it was like a whole vibrant, everybody was doing it, everybody was down for it, everybody knew it, everybody had it. Everybody in New York had a name, you know, it was like everybody was into it. And then it, nobody was into it anymore. And then it was like, well, it doesn't make any money. I'm not doing that. You know, for a lot of people, they could not connect graffiti. They didn't get graffiti. And so they decided, I don't know, I'll paint this balloon. I'll paint this girl letting a balloon go. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh. Shots fired. My name is Espo. I'm going to market these products. As an artist, I'm mark all I'm doing is marketing products. So instead of... Uh, you know, snoo uh, shoes or sneakers. I'm gonna market things like I don't know, paint, struggle, uh, humor, sarcasm. You know, so created a set of emotional products, created things that you can't buy in stores, but artists sell every day of their life. They're making art. It's what artists trade in. So the book, you know, it's really, it's meant to be a little bit of a how-to because for all the cities that are available to me. Um, I can't do them all. So, and people ask me, people have asked me from time to time, hey, I want to do something like you, what you're doing in, in Astoria. So, what can I do about that? And, you know, I tell them the, the, the line about political and community and, and financial support. And the book is meant to show, like, what we went through and what we figured out along the way of figuring it out. What it takes to get projects like these done. Because... People should be able to do it themselves. It's no big deal. But there's a need and there's a want and there's a desire and I love doing it. I've never loved anything more than painting in public and doing work in the public in the public sphere. It's the place to be, you know? And uh, that'll never change. The paintings is like a recent development. You know, I've only been making paintings now for 15 years. But I've been painting for, you know, painting out in the street for 30. You know, I get to put work in this amazing neighborhood filled with literate people, and this is a neighborhood. This is like, what's going on at the Strand is, you know, there's every, every corner of the Strand is a literal corner that has its own politics and its own microcosm of a thing. I've had sign shops now and everywhere that we've painted, and now I've, we have one at 4th and Bergen, at 4th Avenue and Bergen, Brooklyn, New York. We're there every day, unless we're at the Strand.